he began to run towards his lieutenant, receiving enemy fire from all directions. All right, y'all, welcome back to Commodore Arms Channel. Okay, today we're checking out a pretty interesting video. So the creator on this channel actually reached out to me, kind of told me what he was planning on doing as far as like an animated military video. And then they sent me the link when it was uploaded. So this is a pretty new channel. It's called Animated Stories from Around the World. Now I think for a first video, they chose a pretty interesting topic. So they chose the Falklands War, but specifically a story from a soldier that was actually on the Argentinian side. So it's about 20 minutes long. I gotta say, I kind of clicked through it and the quality just seems like insanely good. And, and just like the attention to detail that I've seen has been like very, very impressive. So I think you guys are going to be able to appreciate this because again, just the, the time and dedication and everything that, it just looks like a very professional video and you guys will kind of see what I'm talking about. So let's get into it. In 1982, during the Malvinas Falklands War, in the area of Mount Harriet, an Argentine soldier and his wounded lieutenant were being immobilized by enemy fire. Surround okay, you can kind of already see what I'm talking about. This is like Disney quality animations. It's like just the, the tracers alone, like the detail and the goggles. Man, and like just the, the narration, the voiceover is, is solid. ...by a large number of British soldiers. A thick, dense fog in the darkness of the night. The odds were really against them. While the British had night vision, the Argentines could only have a little vision of their surroundings with flares that illuminated the environment. Huh. After he saw something in the mist, with no more ammunition and hope left, he decided to draw his knife and prepare for the worst. Jeez. With his heartbeats increasing every second, once he saw what came out of that fog, he suddenly fell apart. It did not have the outcome he expected. Whoa, can I say the background is just like phenomenal. Again, just like the, the background of them having, like the Brits having night vision, but not them necessarily, and how they only have to use illumination. And the fact that this dude is going towards whatever, the fog or whatever with his knife, like pretty gnarly. Again, a pretty sm spooky like premise. So I really like how they're already building up to what the story is going to actually contain. I think it is necessary to take certain precautionary measures here in Stanley. Hmm. The Falkland Islands and their dependencies remain British territory. Nice no touch. aggression and no invasion can alter that there simple fact. There is mounting evidence that the Argentine armed forces are preparing to invade the Falkland Islands. Hmm. Dude, this intro is freaking awesome. Like all those like little animated parts for the intro. Dude, I like how they kind of added that that filter over it as well. Really adds like a historic touch. Super cool. Dude, I'm so excited for future videos. <laughs> Dude, that's, hey, well done already. The story of today brings us back to 1982. To these two little islands in South America by the Atlantic Ocean, right next to the south of Argentina. Hmm. These islands, plus South Penguins. Georgia and Sandwich Islands, were the main reason why there was a 74 days yeah, the, the South Georgia thing kind of threw me for a loop whenever I heard that previously. I was thinking like, I know it's not the state, but I was thinking the country, which uh, again, like that kind of exhausted all the geography I know as an American. So the, the South Georgia islands was a new one for me. Conflict between Argentina and the United Kingdom, where like in any historical event, a lot of amazing stories came out of here. And this mm. is one of them. This is the story of Roberto Basilio Baruzzo, one of the 21 soldiers in Argentine history that received the cross for heroic value in combat, the highest decoration awarded by the Argentine army. But before we get to what happened to him hmm. the night of the 11th of June, let's begin with getting to know who he was. Every soldier that goes to war yeah. is not just a number. Each and one of them has a story to tell. And here is where Baruzzo's story starts. Okay. He was born in 1961 background. in Argentina. 
in the province of Corrientes, to be more precise. He didn't come from a military family. Hmm. He used to work with his father fishing and hunting, but since he didn't saw much future doing so, he decided to try his luck in the city, selling newspapers. And I don't know a whole lot about Argentina, especially in like the 1960s, I think is what they're kind of describing here. But again, this gives us also kind of an insight as to what Argentina was like back then. I don't really have a whole lot to compare it to it as far as like modern times, but it is kind of cool. Again, I just don't know a whole lot about Argentina. So kind of seeing his background allows me to at least understand and picture what the lifestyle was like a bit. Where he also didn't saw much future though. So he decided to join the military force and in 1982, he was an instructor at the Mechanized Infantry Regiment 12. Hmm, okay. But was it a good time to be an Argentinian soldier in 1982? <laughs> Argentina, well, hindsight, huh? The Falkland Islands, which had been under British rule for nearly 150 years. Britain promptly broke diplomatic relations with Argentina, sent several of Her Majesty's warships steaming south, and appealed to the United Nations. Hmm. Instagram. Uh, they didn't necessarily have that back then, but it's kind of cool, actually, to think of how you would be seeing some of it in modern times, kind of unfolding. From his regiment in Corrientes, he was mobilized to Piranha, Entre Rios where he would then take a flight to Chibut in the Argentine South. Hmm. He was told that he wasn't heading to the islands. Instead, he was supposed to head to the frontier with Chile. He was actually heading to the Chile. border with the neighboring country. But then there was a small problem For that what? caught them off guard and surprised them a bit. Orders arrived, and the regiment he was in was supposed to land on the islands the next day. Oh my gosh. It was somewhat unusual for Baruzzo, as there were other regiments in the south that were more accustomed to the cold climate of the islands. Yeah, true that. However, he had no choice in the matter. So, the next day he was supposed Military to Military life, huh? They would arrive at night. But before we get there, let's go back and think. What was Baruzzo's regiment comprised of? How did they feel about this? How did he sure. feel about it? Well, he was obviously nervous about the situation, but not for his safety. But rather, I mean, like mechanized infantry, if he was a mechanized infantry instructor, it's a little bit different. You, I don't know how much they still practice as far as like light infantry. It really depends on where you go. But for these guys, especially with his background, if he's focusing on that, I don't know if they had a whole lot of like mechanized infantry support on the islands themselves, if they were able to even like move that much equipment over there. But I haven't heard many stories of them having that kind of support. To the safety of his friends. Many of the soldiers in the regiment were conscripts, barely 18-year-old teenagers, and some of them were even lacking in basic literacy skills. They had received only basic training and, understandably, many were terrified at the thought of going to a war. Some of them approached Roberto, the Brits, asking if he had any idea of what they might encounter once they arrived. But Roberto reassured them, telling them to remain calm, as he believed that the British would not return to the islands anytime soon. Yikes, well, the Brits the are not messing day, around. April 14th, Thatcher was not messing Baruzzo around. Baruzzo and his regiment arrived at the port in the middle of the night at around 3 a.m. It was very dark. You could only see the lights of the planes and hear uncoordinated screams. <laughs> Once Baruzzo reported to his officer, he was told that his unit had to march down an indecipherable path to Mount Challenger. Mount Challenger? That just sounds daunting. Once they arrived, there wasn't much to do but rest and wait for dawn. As the sun began to rise, Baruzzo and the rest of the soldiers realized something. Oh my gosh! Many of these what soldiers way to wake up. knew the location of the islands on a map, but they didn't know much more than that. It was a surprise for them when they had seen that the islands were just a stretch of land with no cover, no forest, or oh shrubbery, my gosh. just grass and mountains. They yeah, and depending on their doctrine, if they don't really have doctrine that kind of works for that kind of terrain, uh, it's going to be pretty difficult to like just start thinking of all that on the fly while you're actively engaged in, in combat, you know. And even with open terrain, there's really not a whole bunch you can do, like maybe more artillery, uh, of course, depending on vehicles. Vehicles are always nice. We're kind of seeing that in Ukraine right now. But if they can't push all that stuff or they just don't have that stuff at their disposal, there's really not a whole lot you can do besides just keep more dispersion spread out a little bit more. I knew they would have to rely on rocks and trenches as defense, but Baruzzo wasn't scared of that. 
he wasn't scared of anything. Until one day, the morning of May 21st, to be more precise, he began to hear a loud gunfight and some explosions at the island's port, San Carlos. He thought that maybe the troops were training, doing normal drills, but it was strange since they usually didn't do it there. He asked his second lieutenant about it, and he told Baruzzo that the sound did not come from training drills. <laughs> okay. That was the day the British troops so started to arrive on the island. Damn. They had encountered some resistance. The Argentine Air Force sank and damaged some ships, but it wasn't enough. The British established the beachhead in San Carlos, just as they had planned, and now they were able to push further inland. I like the historical, like, media coverage they have in the background. The war on the islands not only involved ground forces, but it also took part on the sky. And by May 28th, the British yep, had more control over the skies than the Argentine army. Hmm. At the airport of Stanley, when he was washing his face, he'd seen some planes flying at very low altitude. But he did not <laughs> think much be. about it, since he so didn't know scary. how Argentine planes look like. <laughs> oh, snap. He thought Dude. that those were Argentine aircraft. He was wrong. British planes were flying over him. They started targeting and dropping bombs on every Dude. helicopter they'd seen at the base. Argentine soldiers began to open fire. Dude, this animation. Hell broke insane. loose. Everything around him was a chaos. Baruzzo aimed and fired at the planes, but they were too fast for his rifle. Dude, the detail with like the... The shell casings, like even like the weaponry looks accurate, the uniforms look accurate. Baruzzo aimed and fired at the planes, but they were too fast for his rifle. Huh. Suddenly something exploded next to him. Iron shrapnel pierced his hand, leaving him with a huge painful wound. But despite that, he managed to keep his composure and kept fighting. Hmm. Damn. Once all targets were destroyed, the British aircrafts returned to their base. It is interesting the captain hearing in charge from this of perspective. His regiment ordered to all soldiers to move to the trucks, but he ordered Baruzzo to stay there. That in that state, he would not be able to fight. So Baruzzo, without many options, was left alone, spending the night in one of the damaged helicopters. Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, at least it probably won't day, get targeted again. He woke up with a very painful and infected injured arm. So, Jeez, already? he got up and started to head to Two Sisters Ridge, where a sergeant had seen him and told him that he needed urgent medical attention, but he couldn't get it there. Shit. So he was sent to Mount Longdon. He crossed the entire mount till he reached Mount Longdon, but he did not think to be so unlucky. He's just doing this all by himself. I'm wondering, like, how far these actually are and how he's actually, you know, if he's just, like, walking or if maybe he got, like, a ride somewhere. It's pretty wild. I mean... Again, I imagine they're kind of just trying to deal with a lot at that point. So, you know, having onesies and twosies kind of floating around. I mean, in general, with like crazy conflict like this, yeah, you kind of expect that to happen every now and again. But it is interesting to kind of hear how like resourceful people can be just trying to, you know, make themselves useful or, of course, like with him, just trying to get some aid. Expecting immediate medical attention and a proper rest, as soon Shit. as he reached Mount Longdon, British planes started to attack the zone. Oh my god. Bombing and destroying anything they could. Baruzzo couldn't do much. He quickly tried to protect himself next to a big rock. There was not much cover to take. No place was safe. Bombs yeah, were reaching everything and everybody. Argentine so forces couldn't sky. fight back. It was too much for them. So a huge amount of soldiers started fleeing the zone, running and taking any exit they could. One of those soldiers, in a moment of panic, ran over Baruzzo's arm. Oh my god. He stopped right where he was injured. This not only caused a huge and tremendous pain, but it also made him feel as if something hot was running through his arm. Bro, his He quickly checked and saw and that arm? there was a piece of wire coming out of his wound. So he decided to grab the wire and started to stretch it out of his arm all the way pain? out till he felt that it got stuck. He tried to take it out a bit more, but it was still stuck in his hand. Bro. So, he pulled out his knife and decided to cut the rest of the wire. Wire? During all of these moments, he felt as if he was rotting. He had a huge infection in his wound and a huge fever. Once the British attack had finished, he stood up and went rushing straight to the infirmary. 
Yeah, which probably has a lot more. Once he got inside, people, he couldn't find not. a single medic. A huge amount of soldiers Bro. left his own. So he had to find the medical supplies and apply them by himself. <laughs> he searched the them through all the zone, but the wound was making him have a hard time doing so. Suddenly he saw a couple of untouched supplies. He quickly rushed to them and, without much knowledge of medicine, swiftly took a bandage and some penicillin. Okay. He poured some over the wound and bandaged his arm. Despite the pain he was feeling, Dude. he also experienced a sense of peace. It's like, what a survival story. Like, this dude just, he doesn't get a break. And again, it's pretty, like, daunting to think when, you know, if you don't have the air superiority and it's such open terrain, you're really kind of just like a sitting duck, especially with him. I mean, if they have, like, tents, there's really no, like, fortifications. I think there are some trenches, but again like even still I, you probably don't want to be there because they're probably gonna be targeted more than the actual medical tents and stuff would be finally he treated that wound and most importantly he was alive hmm. but that moment of peace didn't last for long a of british naval not. ship started to open fire on his location dude it felt like hell everything was shaking he was trying to process what was going on Waiting under a table until it was over, suddenly, he heard someone screaming. So, he rushed out of the infirmary, despite bombs raining down on him. He then saw that it was another soldier, he was injured. Baruzzo knew he had to take him out of there, so, without thinking twice, he rushed to him. He dropped his gun and decided to take him to a safer place, saving his life from the naval ship's barrage. Yeah, naval gunfire is a little background about him crazy, and his dude. journey through the war. What happened on the night of the 11th of June? Argentina was on the... I kind of think of it with such like, I mean, depending on the mountains and kind of elevation changes, but having like such wide terrain, like naval gunfire, which generally fires at like a lower angle, is going to be a little bit more effective as well. Even with like the elevation, it might make it more effective. You know, if you're at a higher elevation than the sea level, then that naval gunfire can probably affect you um, in a lot of different areas. Edge of the war, it was nearing the end. At this point, fighting was almost in vain, but Argentine soldiers felt the need to defend huh. the islands at all costs, despite the course of the war. At Mount Longden, First Lieutenant Jorge Echeverria, an intelligence officer, had grouped together several soldiers from the 12th and 4th regiments. Their destination was Mount Harriet, and they had to support the infantry that was already there, in one of the few areas where Argentina still held the British forces. Despite yeah. Echeverria and other platoons bringing a large number of soldiers, British troops were better trained and equipped. Argentina had numbers, but the British had quality. In this battle, many well-trained British soldiers had night vision scopes, while Argentine conscript soldiers had to rely on their iron sight rifles. From the zone Dude. of Two Sisters Night Ridge, vision is game Mount changer Harriet, in that. Baruzzo could see flares, bombs, and tracer rounds, lighting up the hell that the British offensive had brought to the Argentine army on those mountains. Hmm. It was crushing his soul. But then, he overheard some officers talking about Lieutenant Echeverria and his unit being isolated and under fire on Mount Harriet. For them, oh, it was practically a suicide mission, and they couldn't afford- You also have to think, like, he was injured, what, like, a week before this? So I imagine his injuries are probably still causing him a little bit of pain, at least discomfort at the minimum. ...or to risk more lives just to rescue some soldiers that might or might not be alive. Baruzzo didn't know who Echeverria was, but he heard that he was the father of a two-year-old daughter, so he took it very personally. Hmm. He felt the moral duty to save that man and as many soldiers as he could. So, he made his way to the captain, passing by a bunch of soldiers whispering about how hard the battle was on Mount Harriet. Once Baruzzo had seen the captain, he told him that he was going to rescue Echeverria. Okay. The captain didn't know who he was talking to. He asked to Baruzzo, how did he plan to get there? And Baruzzo simply told him that he knew how to get to Mount Harriet and that he would do it on his own. The captain bluntly told yeah. him that doing that was a guaranteed death for him, but Baruzzo didn't care much and told him that he was going anyway. Yeah, he said his land now. He could I choose guess. the soldiers to go with and help him, but he wanted to go by himself. Once huh. he had gathered everything he needed, he decided to make his way towards Mount Harriet, where the trapped unit would be. That is wild, when he reached dude. the place, he saw that the true definition of hell was in front of his eyes. 
he began to make his way deep into the battle, throwing suppressive fire towards the enemy's direction. Dude, With the sound of like gunfights lone coming wolf from over every here. place in the zone, it was very hard to hear if someone was near you. So, without knowing it, he and a British soldier were a few feet apart from each other. Dude, especially when the Brits have night vision, I'd be scared to like move anywhere. I'd be like, well, someone's definitely watching, like the boogeyman's watching me. The British soldier was getting closer and closer to Baruzzo. And as soon as they both saw each other, there was a fire exchange. Baruzzo shot the British soldier down and took his night vision scope. Now he had a better chance of finding any allied soldier who needed help, but most importantly, he could now see the enemy very well. Yeah, again, it does feel weird kind of seeing it from, from the different perspectives, uh, at least from like the Argentinian perspective. But again, like I think this video is doing a good job at keeping it like relatively, like ve well, very respectful uh, kind of, you know, for, for both sides considering, you know, it's, it's an armed conflict and it's never generally a good thing for, for anybody. But I think they're keeping it pretty respectful. Scouting his surroundings, he could clearly see Lieutenant Echeverria, but he was pinned down by British suppressive fire. Baruzzo quickly began to open fire on them. After the first shot, he had to locate the second British soldier. Man, and, uh, and again, like, if you're the Brits and you have the night vision and you're not expecting that, you know, the adversary to have any night vision, but then it seems like they're, like, you know, firing you pretty effectively, it's going to be kind of... Uh, disconcerting. I mean, even thinking about like the global war on terror, when people started acquiring some night vision, even like earlier generation night vision, it definitely does change the dynamic pretty significantly. As soon as he saw something move, he opened fire again. He didn't know what to do. There were more soldiers than the ones he had shot, but he had to make a move. He began to run towards his lieutenant, receiving enemy fire from all directions. Damn. He the music too. To Hopefully, it's not a position, wrapped his vest, copyrighted, him up, and began to leave that cover. They were getting away from the danger until a bullet struck the lieutenant's leg. He dropped to the ground. Oof. A British soldier was coming right after them, oh, and man. as soon as he saw Baruzzo and Echeverria, he opened fire. But right after the first shot, his gun jammed. Baruzzo ended it. Frickin' FAL. From another nearby zone. There was another British soldier who took aim at them, but Baruzzo was already aiming in that direction. Apparently he then his, looked at his right and saw more sure. silhouettes in the fog, so That's he decided to grab like. Echeverria and leave that zone. But just as they were leaving, another British soldier spotted them. Oh my gosh, people Baruzzo all over the place. and the British soldier both aimed at each other, and shots were quickly heard. Echeverria dropped to the ground. He was badly injured. Baruzzo quickly tried to apply a tourniquet to his wound, doing Dude. everything he could to save his life in that moment. Damn, that's got to be crappy for the lieutenant. Like, you kind of think you're, you're getting out of there, and then, again, yeah, just people kind of, like, hitting you, like, multiple times in, like, stages. Jeez. Again, for him, he's like, Dude, what is going on? But the lieutenant grabbed his vest and told him to leave him there. He wanted to die in peace, but Baruzzo couldn't do it. And he couldn't hold back his tears. I wonder if they had he body armor. He started crying like on the plates. lieutenant's chest, thinking that it was over for both of them. Suddenly, he spotted some movement in the fog. He quickly pulled out his knife, got up, and prepared for the worst. Oh, here we go. Okay. He positioned himself in front of Echeverria while also seeing a silhouette with a gun approaching. The situation Sheesh. was growing more and more tense. Baruzzo thought, "If you're going to shoot me, you'd better do it because I'm not going to show you any mercy." When that silhouette emerged, he saw that it was a British soldier shouting something at him. Baruzzo couldn't understand it clearly. He spoke a bit of English, but due to his nerves, he couldn't hear very well. Hmm. The British soldier nervously tapped his knife, signaling to him that he Damn, needed that to close? surrender. Baruzzo, frightened about the situation and not knowing what could happen to him once he surrendered, but with not many options around, he decided to drop his knife. Damn. I didn't think he could get that close to tap his knife. The British soldier muzzle? put his weapon aside and decided to hug him while shouting some orders. Baruzzo hmm. cried on his shoulder while the British soldier repeated the same words. The war is over. The war is over. Damn. I want to see like interviews that they have with this with this soldier. 
I probably wouldn't understand it because I don't speak Spanish or... Yeah, Spanish. At dawn, Baruzzo was sitting on a rock, waiting for orders from the British. When one of the passing soldiers stopped and told him that he was a lucky one, because the British commander had a strict moral code, they couldn't shoot an enemy who was fighting to save the life of another soldier. Hmm. If he had abandoned his lieutenant, he definitely wouldn't be there alive. Two days later, the war ended with a British victory. It had claimed from both sides Same the life later. of 904 soldiers and 2432 were injured. Lieutenant Jorge Echeverria was transported by helicopter to the HMS Uganda hospital ship where he would be healed from his wounds. Damn, okay. Roberto Baruzzo returned to Argentina days later and was huh. awarded the highest decoration by the Argentine army. Damn. The two of them were reunited 24 years later. That's kind of cool, the pictures. Holy cow, dude. Oh man, that Patreon's gonna have some cool stuff, man. I'm not an animator, but I have a whole lot of respect for these animations. It's especially ones with like that much attention to detail. Like it's believable. It kind of gets you more immersed, allows you to visualize everything a lot better. Um, and, and even if done like not necessarily that great, it's still kind of nice, it's interesting. It's a cool way to kind of take these stories and translate them into a video. But again, when they're done this well, like, oh my gosh, just, yeah, it's it's very, very impressive stuff. Yeah, I cannot wait to see what else comes out from, from this creator. That was very, very impressive, very well done. And again, very respectful. It's kind of difficult to kind of, you know, use the, the, the flip side. A lot of the stories that you hear are usually from the British perspective, but there's very few that, you know, you can kind of see from the Argentinian perspective and really kind of appreciate to what it must have been like on their side to be going against, you know, the, the might of the, the Brits. And again, just done in a respectful way, kind of telling the story, um, but also kind of not like meddling, not meddling the details, but also not kind of saying it in a way that's you know, just disrespectful really to anyone or, you know, those who actually were killed in the conflict. I really want to know what you guys think about these. I mean, animations in general, it's hard to do an animation, harder to do an animation for, you know, war or yeah, conflict or firefights. It's harder to do that and kind of keep, keep that respectful tone, kind of keep that believable tone where it doesn't seem like cartoony. But this was done in a really cinematic way. Again, the animations were very uh, believable and it really got you immersed in everything. And I mean, I've seen and heard a lot of stories from the Falklands War, but seeing it like this kind of changes my perspective or imagery of it, especially coming from the Argentinian side. So let me know what you guys think about this. Of course, I will put his channel in the description. I would definitely recommend going over and subscribing because if we see more content like this, uh, it is just animated stories from around the world. It's very vague. I'm really excited to see what might come up in the future. Uh, yeah, very, very well done. And again, just interesting, kind of getting that perspective from a different, a different side for such an interesting conflict that a lot of Americans don't really know about um, really at all. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the, the commentary over this. I mean, the video itself is fantastic. So definitely worth checking out the channel just for that. But that is it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one.